Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining MX episode 8, where we do the last episode on testing the Timesvade Dreamer mechanical mod. And future mods will probably have one video, maybe a second one, but there are so many opportunities to test different pins, different metals, etc., to be able to flesh out how I wanted to test the other ones. I decided to do this one in four videos. For this video, we're going to compare performances between four different pins. We're going to see how much button changes, swaps, between the best performing and the worst performing, quote, worse. It's not a bad performer. It's just the lesser performing of the metals available for the Dreamer. And uh, also do an arcing test uh, using uh, two batteries. And we'll pick one of the mods and we'll try uh, the two different pins that come stock with it, the flat top and what they call the multi-point, multi what I call the waffle or neural pin. Before this, I had measured the resistance of the pins. Now the flat one, just to see, correlate the flat one, which is not installed when you get it, and I'm on fixed focus, so I don't want to bring this too close. But this pin, interestingly, um, well, this pin measured about 13 micro ohms. At 30 amps, that's less than one half of one thousandth of a volt drop through this. Now, going to the multi point pin, and I'm hoping you can catch the knurling there. Uh, this is the one that's installed and was used for my previous test. This one, interestingly, tested out at 39 micro ohms, which is three times the resistance. And you'll be, you might be thinking, oh, man, there's no way I'm freaking using the multipoint. Screw that. Yeah, but three times almost nothing is still almost nothing. Here is a little less than one half of one thousandth of a volt for the flap top pin, just through the pin, the voltage drop. Through the multipoint one, it's only a little bit over one thousandth of a volt, 1.2 thousandths of a volt drop through this pin. So the performance change in terms of just going through the pin is almost nothing, uh, differences between them. Then I've also got an all copper one, namely unplated, because these this one is uh, copper, silver plated copper, unplated copper, and gold plated copper. And we're gonna take a look to see what it, performance differences might be here with two stock pins but also the special pins. And I want to thank uh, Tenacious TX Vape Stan for sending these two over to do these tests with. And let's put in the um, flat top pin. We're going to use the best performing mech and we'll do the test across the four pins. All right, so they all measured what should have been inconsequential differences between them in performance. The flat one end up performing a little bit better, tiny bit better in terms of voltage drop. But if I did multiple tests, it might all end up be the same. And then the multi-point one, the silver plated and the copper multi-point ones, silver plated one here on the left being the one that uh, comes installed, these perform the same. And then the gold one, interestingly, performed a tiny bit worse. Now, that doesn't mean gold is crap and it's said and so forth because the plating is so thin. I think it's more to do with how it was tightened down, maybe a particular a slight difference in the knurling up on top, number of contact points, things like that. But a 0 0.02 volt difference between any of the pins, 0 0.025 volt difference, I don't think you should be worried, especially since the gold and the copper aren't even included. But Stan, thank you. And these, the flat and the waffle top, were within 0 0.01 volts of each other. What I'm going to do now is take two waffle pins, since they're, that's a stock pin, that's what I want to use, and I want to swap buttons. I want to measure them, you know, copper with copper button, stainless steel with stainless steel button, and then I want to swap buttons and start to see how that will affect the uh, voltage drops. So let's just get this reassembled, and we'll start from scratch and just measure the performance of each. And I measured both pins. They're within uh, just a couple micro ohms of each other. Alright, let's get the uh, copper one back on again. Works better if I actually put the top cap in place.
Okay. 0 0.035. 0 0.035 0 0.038 0 0.04 So I'm going to say 0 0.037 for copper with copper Okay, let's see what the stainless steel does Stainless steel, stainless steel Button Point two five, point three one, point two eight, which is what I was getting before the copper, point three five, point three three. So I'm going to say point three three. So SS with an SS button is 0.33, and the copper and copper is 0.037. So 9 to 10 times better than the copper. Now the copper is performing a lot better this time than it was the last time I tested it. So I may have to come back to retest the retest. I did a double, actually a triple cleaning on the copper, like, like I would never clean before. I did a normal thermal cleaning, uh, a normal thermal cleaning last time when I tested this with the other metals and all of them were clean the same. This time I cleaned this thing like you would not believe with vinegar soaks and all kinds of stuff. So there was a performance improvement after a toothbrush scrubbing with metal polish and vinegar soaks and then IPA alcohol wipes and then uh, using hair dryer to dry it off as quickly as possible and then doing the test. Um, and it, it makes a difference. You got even less of a voltage drop that way. Uh, doing the same thing with stainless steel didn't make too much of a difference. So copper is really sensitive. I mean, we knew that, but copper is really sensitive to the amount of cleaning. All right, I'm going to try the stainless button on the copper now. We had 0 0.037 with copper tube and copper button. Now it's copper tube with stainless button. You know, most of this works better if the slug is inside. Ah, I love those squeaky clean threads. Don't like the sound, but they're clean. 0.23. Wow. 0.25. 0.26. Point two five. Okay, point two five. Copper tube and stainless button is point two five. Now we'll try a stainless tube with a copper button. So the uh, stainless button really hurt the performance performance of the copper one, but not as bad as having an all stainless tube. It was in between. All right, stainless tube, copper button. Nice. 0 0.08. 0 0.065. 0 0.066. 0 0.075. Oh, have to hit it in the middle, though. Point oh six, point one. Hands getting tired holding it like this. Point oh six five. I'm going to call this point oh six five, and that is with a SS tube, a copper button. Point zero six five. Okay, let me uh, write that down. Okay, here are the numbers. An all copper tube is point at the top. Uh, 
37 millivolts, 0.037 volts. If we put this stainless steel tube on there, yeah, less than doubled, almost doubled the voltage drop, but we still got very good performance. There not, wasn't much of a change by using a stainless steel tube. But if we took the copper tube, the third one down, and went to the stainless steel button, there was a big jump in the voltage drop. So the stainless steel button uh, is where most of the voltage drop is, and the stainless steel, stainless steel down at the bottom was 0.33. So it's really the button that determines performance. So if you've got an all stainless at 0.33 volts, and you put a copper button on it, um, you can do maybe, you know, that's about one fifth the voltage drop. And, you know, that's uh, probably, well, it's going to be a few watts difference between those just by swapping buttons on there. So that gives you an idea that you can uh, get better performance by taking the stainless tube and putting the copper button on it. 300 button presses, one with the flat pin on one battery and the other one with the multipoint pin on a different battery. And I'll take a look at this. I'll try to include a, a close-up photo at the tops, otherwise I'll describe it. And I will not make you sit here through 300 button presses, but uh, we're not going to be using the slug anymore. I don't want to use a new set of batteries every time I do these arcing tests, but right now let's uh, grab the rig we're going to use because I don't feel like pulsing my power supply like that. So what we've got here, this will be able to see the amount of current uh, that we're drawing. And I just got another Cosmonaut. And this is a 0.1 ohm resistor. And we've got to pull this up in order to get that fairly tight. Okay. And so we've got the multi-point pin in there. And we're going to use the, um, as instructed, the positive side down. And of course, it all works better if I make it an all copper mech. Well, not better. Well, actually, yeah, it is better. It'll perform better. But that's the test I want to do. Okay. And I just want to do a quick check. Make sure current is flowing. Okay, so we've got about 33.3. And you see drop, 32.9. And what I would do is... 300 presses and we'll check the uh, arcing on this multipoint pin on the, the positive of the battery because it's positive down towards the button positive down that way and starting one two three five nine six nine seven nine eight nine nine three hundred okay so you still just being able to What we can do is change pins to the flat one, then we'll change batteries. And a quick look. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get some good pictures of it, but there's some, uh, some marking there. Slightly warm battery. That's interesting. Okay. It fits in there tightly. And we'll take out the multi point pin and put in the flat pin. There's the flat pin. Battery positive down. The new one, not the other one. And quick check to make sure. 33.9, 33.65. Okay. And 300 presses. One, two, three, four, five. Five, nine, six, nine, seven, nine, eight, nine, nine, three hundred. Oh, that is hot. Wow. 
And let's check the battery. We have to put a fan on that for some of these tests. Okay, and uh, arcing. All right, so this is the one flat. This is multipoint. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll try to get a close-up picture and insert it right here. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for watching.